Okay, uh, this is uh, part two of the von Neumann proof of the von Neumann Morgenstern representation theorem. Um, and in this, I just want this will just be a short proof of one lemma that we will need. So, to remind you, um, Z is a set of our finite set of prizes, uh, P is the set of all lotteries or probabilities over Z, um, and then we have this relation here. Um, and this is the agent's preference relation. So the three axioms we assume, uh, number one, this is a preference relation. Uh, so this, this binary relation on P satisfies all the uh, requisite properties of being a preference relation. We have the independence assumption, and A3 is the axiom, uh, the what's called the Archimedean property, or the um, uh, continuity assumption. Um, so the fact that we're going to prove today relies really just on this axiom A2. And the fact that we're going to prove is the following. So suppose that we have a binary relation on P, so we have our set of lotteries, um, and it satisfies each of these axioms. Now, if the agent strictly prefers lottery P over lottery Q, and uh, there are two numbers, A and B, such that B is strictly greater than A, then the, la the agent has this preference over these compound lotteries. So look at the lottery here. This is the lottery where if uh, with probability B, you play lottery P, and with probability one minus B, you end up playing lottery Q. And the lottery over here is with probability A, you play lottery P, and with probability one minus A, you end up playing lottery Q. Now since B is strictly greater than A, this just means you have, it's more likely that you're gonna end up playing lottery P um, if, in, this uh, in this compound lottery right here. So if you strictly prefer playing P over Q, then you're going to strictly prefer situations where it's more likely that you play P over Q. Uh, that's what this lemma says. So it's natural. It seems like um, uh, it's, a, it's a natural thing to prove. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to see, we want to prove that this must be true. It turns out that all we really need to prove this is axiom A2. All right, so let's see how the proof actually goes. So here's our proof. Um, now, so we're going to suppose that the agent has a preference relation on P and it satisfies A1 and in particular A2, which is what we're going to need. Um, and now I want to suppose that the agent strictly prefers lottery P over Q, and we want to derive the fact that the agent strictly prefers this compound lottery over this other compound lottery. Okay, we're going to start off with a simple case. Uh, suppose that A is actually equal to zero. So we're going to start off with the case, because A is allowed to be zero, we're going to start off with the case when A equals zero. Okay, then we have um, zero is less than B, which is less than one. Now, I want to show that this property holds when A is actually equal to zero, okay? Um, now, by property A2, consider BP plus one minus BQ, that compound lottery, okay? And now we're going to apply axiom A2, um, where we're gonna let R be the axiom uh, the, the lottery Q, okay? So we know that the agent strictly prefers P over Q. If we apply A2 to that, where R is actually equal to Q, and uh, the, the number we, we're, we're choosing for A here in this axiom is B, uh, then we'll have BP plus one minus BQ must be strictly preferred to uh, B Q plus one minus B Q. Because again, remember, we're, we're just assuming that the lottery R in this axiom right here is actually um, the lottery Q.
Okay, so just one direct application of axiom A2 tells us that assuming that P is strictly preferred to Q, that tells me that BP plus one minus BQ must be strictly preferred to BQ. So remember, P is strictly preferred to Q, right? So we, P is strictly preferred to Q. Um, and now these two components of the compound lotteries are exactly the same. And that's the form of this um, axiom A2. All right, um, and now we just do some uh, simple algebra. Note that this actually equals BQ plus uh, Q minus BQ, which is actually just equal to Q. Okay, so BP plus one minus BQ equal, uh, is strictly preferred by the agent to just the lottery Q. Uh, but note, if A is equal to zero, then this actually equals AQ plus one minus A, uh, sorry, AP plus one minus AQ. Uh, because if A is equal to zero, then this term right here uh, drops off and one minus zero is one. So I've been able to show what I wanted to that this compound lottery is strictly preferred to that compound lottery. Okay, so we know the statement holds when A is equal to zero, uh, but what about for other numbers A? So for, um, so now, now we can suppose that zero, that A is strictly greater than zero, uh, and B is greater than one, which uh, B may, may be one, we're not sure. Okay, um, so we've assumed this. We also know that P must be strictly preferred to Q. Now what we're going to do is we're going to consider a lottery R, which is equal to BP plus one minus BQ. So just consider this lottery right here. Um, and furthermore, since a is greater than zero. Well, we have, uh, furthermore, we also have A over B must be smaller than one. Why is that? Actually, we don't need, uh, if A was equal to zero, then, then this would just be the number zero, sorry. Um, so A over B must be smaller than one. That's just because B is larger than A. So if you have a smaller number divided by a larger number, that must be smaller than one. Okay, so we have A over B is less than one, and we have this compound lottery R. Okay, now I claim that R must be strictly preferred to Q. So take a moment and try to see if you can figure out why that must be the case. It's, it's actually a simple application of A2. So why is R strictly preferred to Q? Well, remember, R is equal to BP plus one minus BQ. Now I can apply axiom A2 again, and I want to show that, that um, this must be strictly uh, preferred to something involving Q. Well, since P is greater than Q, I know that by applying axiom A2 that this is strictly uh, preferred to BQ plus one minus BQ. Because again, take a look. If we let R equals Q, we have the exact same term here. So one minus, so in, uh, we're, we're, A is equal to B in this case. One minus uh, the, the, the probability times Q. These terms are the same. And we, we've assumed, of course, that P is strictly preferred to Q. Okay, so we have a compound lottery R, and we know that the agent strictly prefers R over Q. Okay, so uh, I need to, let's need some space here. Uh, so now remember R is equal to BP plus one minus BQ. We have A over B must be smaller than one. And we also know that R is strictly preferred to Q. Now, 
Since r is strictly preferred to q, what we're going to do is we're going to apply axiom a2 to this uh, r um, uh, to, to the fact that the agent strictly prefers r over q. Um, now we're going to do it. We're going to note if if a over b is smaller than one, we also have one minus a over b is smaller than one. Um, so we're going to consider a equals, so in this axiom here, a is going to be the real number one minus a over b. Okay, so why, why are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna let r equals one minus a over b r plus a over b r. That's just so if we distribute this r, we see that uh, the, uh, the a over b r's cancel out. Uh, but this must be strictly preferred by an, an application of axiom a2. That must be strictly preferred to one minus a over b q plus a over b r. So why is that? Well, again, look, we have r is strictly preferred to q, so r is strictly preferred to q. We have a number between zero and one, so one minus a over b is a number between zero and one. Um, and these two terms here are exactly the same. Okay, and there, so if, if a is one minus a over b, then one minus one minus a over b is just a over b. Okay, so this is just one application of a2 gives me that r must be strictly preferred to this compound lottery. And now this just boils down to doing some algebra. So take a look at this term right here. This is going to be equal to q minus a over b q plus a over b. Now this is gonna be times, now let's just remind ourselves what the lottery R actually is. The lottery R written up here is b p plus one minus b q. All right, so let's do a little bit of algebra. So this is equal to q minus a over b q plus and now let's just distribute this a over b in. So a over b times b p is just gonna be a p plus, now this is gonna be a over b times q minus, um, so a over b uh, uh, times b q is just gonna be a q. Okay, so you have to see, I, I kind of, I'm doing uh, two steps at once here. I'm distributing this a over b into this sum, but I also distribute this q into one minus b. So this is going to be bp plus q minus bq, and then over that whole uh, equation, you distribute this a over b. Okay, um, in any case, just make sure you work out this algebra yourself. Uh, but now we can see that this term here cancels with that term. And so what we have is Q plus A P minus A Q, uh, which just doing again some algebra is gonna be A P plus, now we have Q minus A Q, so that's just going to be one minus A Q. So what have I proven? I've just shown that R must be strictly preferred to AP plus one minus AQ. But R itself is just BP plus one minus BQ. So I've proven that R, which is this term right here, must be strictly preferred to AP plus one minus AQ. Okay, so this is a proof of this lemma right here, um, and again, uh, you know, the the it, it boils down to a couple applications of a two followed by some algebra.